Hi, my name is Karan and I'm working in Moss. Moss is the leading spend management platform in B2B segment based in Berlin. Today we are going to talk about GitHub self hosted runners on Kubernetes with ARC. Let's jump into it. Before diving deep into self hosted runners, let's briefly introduce GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is a CI/CD platform that works on a choose your own adventure approach, meaning the flexibility to use community shared actions or write your own actions using any supported language. Writing a workflow is quite easy. Uh, as an example on the right side, um, here we have defined a trigger. Uh, so it will execute it on the pull request. Uh, we have defined a job, job name is build, uh, which will run on Ubuntu latest. And then a step is defined, which will just execute a equal statement of hello build. It looks simple enough, but where are these steps executed? On entities known as runners. In the above example, uh, workflow runs on Ubuntu latest, and this is the flag which is staged to run the job on GitHub hosted Ubuntu machine. So uh, there are two types of runners. Uh, one we have seen as a GitHub hosted runner. These are the virtual machines hosted by GitHub. They are convenient because they are fully managed by GitHub, uh, saving developers the hassle of setup and maintenance. They come with a broad range of developer tools pre-installed. Then there are another type of runners called uh, self-hosted runners. And these are user present machines that are set up by the users themselves. They offer more flexibility and control over the environment. You might be having thought that while GitHub hosted runners are convenient, why might one opt for self-hosted runners? Let's find it out. In a regulated finance institution, data confidential security plays an important role. And there are other reasons as well, like full control over the build environment, limiting internal network access from applications to databases or vault, a specific software or hardware requirements or pre-installed applications, etc. Enterprise users, uh, they deploy uh, self-deploy their GitHubs, so tend to deploy runners as well. And because of all these requirements, self-deployed runners or self-hosted runners are, up, uh, are needed. And now we uh, know why we want to run self-hosted runners. So let's see how to do it. So there are two options to deploy it uh, on VMs on our Kubernetes. Before ARC, mostly self-hosted runners were deployed on virtual machines. Auto-scaling virtual machines is a challenge because either we have to keep the virtual machines uh, running all the time uh, or like over provisioned we can say, which leads to a waste of resource or we can keep them under provisioned which leads to slow builds and poor developer experience. And mostly virtual machines are persistent machines which uh, um, because spinning of a VM takes time. So we don't, uh, uh, so most of the people don't run virtual machines in an ephemeral way. On the other hand, running workloads on a Kubernetes cluster brings its own perks like scalability, resource efficiency, and more control over security, network policies, and other configuration. So it comes as a natural choice if we are already using Kubernetes cluster for all other applications, then why not use uh, uh, runners on the same Kubernetes cluster as well? So how do we deploy runners on the Kubernetes cluster? Here comes the Action Runner Controller. Action Runner Controller is a Kubernetes operator that orchestrates and scales self-hosted runners on for GitHub actions. With ARC, we can deploy self-hosted runners on a Kubernetes cluster, auto-scale runners based on demand, and we can set up runner at repository level, organization level, or at enterprise level. Because controlled runners can be ephemeral and based on containers, new runner instances can scale up or down very quickly. And uh, cleanup also happens very uh, fast. So in this diagram, whole flow is covered, uh, like how the communication happens uh, in between Kubernetes cluster and uh, uh, GitHub. Uh, but let's break into pieces and see a simplified version of it to get more graphs of uh, what's going on inside. One more important point to remember is that currently there are two different versions in use. One is community supported version, another is 
github supported version okay so community supported version uh, so actually um, it, it is also called as a legacy setup initially arc was an independent project and later in, this, in december 2022 adopted by github team and converted into its own product so there are architectural changes as well as crd changes in between both the versions but still both versions uh, work and, uh, and they are in use in so many different companies there are uh, there were some shortcomings with the legacy setup uh, one was certificate manager was uh, required as prerequisite to install arc cert manager was used for certificate management of admission webhook and then another thing was that auto scaling was an issue over and under scaling issues in the legacy approaches well let's skip the legacy setup and discuss more about the current setup okay and this is how it looks like so after github has adopted the action runner controller project and started handling it as one of its own product they have introduced uh, major improvements in terms of auto scaling reliability and security so now cert manager is no more required as prerequisite for arc then uh, uh, for authentication with the github and there are multiple options like uh, we can provide github personal access token or github app installation token so um, earlier they were passed to the runner but now in this approach they are no longer passed to the runner pod for runner registration so uh, like security is increased in, in that term no more api rate limiting problems so now new apis are created and uh, then they are uh, they do not hit uh, more than the limit another point is reliable auto scaling so on a high level there are mainly two components needed to be installed uh, if we if you just follow the quick start guide which is provided on the github uh, page okay so the first one is to install the operator and crd uh, and crds by hamchat that creates controller manager okay controller man manager is the entity which controls the whole setup then the second uh, step will be to enable arc to authenticate to github so uh, as i said earlier that there are two options um, we can provide github personal access token or uh, github app we can install github app and then can generate the install token and then can provide to it then the third step will come uh, to install another handjet uh, which will create runner scale set which will be uh, taking care of uh, initializing the runners and then clean it up when runner scale set receives a new job uh, request it starts an ephemeral runner and run the job okay let's see uh, okay so in the next uh, like after arc is installed and if you set minimum runner equal to one then you will see the runner is created and available under self-hosted runner tab uh, yeah so now here you are seeing like arc runner set is a label okay and this runner will be created as idle runner okay because right now it is not serving any kind of job so it is set as idle but whenever the job request will come it is ready to accept the job okay and uh, this label label is the same which will be used in our workflow so this is our sample workflow here um, we are running a, is on workflow dispatch so like on demand it can be invoked and that run as we have specified the label which we have uh, which we got from the runner so it is arc runner set so once this workflow will be invoked okay it will be executed and we'll see in the build that runner name runner group and the machine uh, it is the same set of uh, uh, information which which is deployed by self-hosted runners okay so it, it is just starting with sample workflow in real world more complex uh, workflows we have and runners should be configured according to the need but just for the demo purpose uh, uh, we, we are seeing this example okay so let's see more of uh, runner configuration one of the important thing to note is uh, uh, how we need to 
or how we supposed to run uh, these containers, the ARC containers. So there are uh, different modes. Uh, only, uh, mainly there are like Docker and Docker and Kubernetes. Okay, but DND rootless also uh, widely used. So what are these? Docker and Docker mode is a configuration that allows you to run Docker inside a Docker container. It's less secure because it runs pod in privileged mode and allows access to the host resource. And if you are running a third party GitHub action in it, then uh, you don't have control over what's going to be executed. That's why Docker, Docker, uh, Docker and Docker is uh, not a preferred way uh, when you are executing uh, any of the Docker container, which is not known or not created by uh, uh, ourselves. Then the second uh, option is um, DND rootless. So it is the same as Docker and Docker, but only the thing is uh, that uh, pod will not be used as uh, will not be used as root user, but it's still the privileged mode will be used. So it is kind of uh, like uh, better than DND, uh, DND but it still uh, run needs to run privileged mode. Then the third is the Kubernetes. In Kubernetes mode. It, it does not require any privileged containers and the runner creates additional Kubernetes pod to run containerized workflow. And ARC uses runner's container hooks. Okay, so these are the hooks which takes care of creating a new pod, running the uh, new container in that pod and then, uh, then executing the job. Okay, and the Kubernetes mode relies on persistent volume to share job details between both the runners and the container job. Okay, so this is how, uh, here we don't need the container and Docker in Docker, but e even though we are able to uh, execute another container. So now we are having, uh, so now we are running runners on our Kubernetes cluster, but we need to be aware of security practices to follow. One of the thing is to avoid privileged pods. Uh, we have already seen why Docker and Docker is not uh, a preferred way. Okay, uh, you can use uh, DND rootless, which has its own limitation, and it is still runs the pod with privileged mode. Uh, granular permissions for GitHub authentication. So GitHub app that is configured for authentication should have required permissions only. If you give more permission uh, that it needs then it will be a security lapse. It's a common practice to create your own runner images with required tools and it should be created with minimal base image and extra component should be removed because most of the time when we create the image, okay, we see, okay, like uh, so many different tools uh, we might need and we create a bigger image. And when uh, the security comes into picture, those tools which are not used by us can be exploited by others. Runners should be short-lived containers to handle single job only, and it prevents long-lived access token. That's why Ethereum runners are uh, preferred. Then um, namespaces isolation, I would say it's a required thing because namespaces do a fantastic job providing resource quota, sharing secrets, settling policies, and more. And if possible, create a dedicated cluster for running CICD workflow to not interfere with the applications. In complex workflow, uh, we write our own actions and also use third party actions, but those should be from verified sources only. So uh, like these are the common best practices when we are talking about uh, uh, GitHub actions. But when we are running those actions inside our own cluster, then these happens to be must. If you'd like to give it a try, then demo is available at the repo with sample configuration. You can update the config as per need and deploy in your own environment. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.